This is Mike Hanewald, Field Agronomist and Precision Farming Advisor with Bex Hybrids. And I want to talk with you today a little bit about wheat management. So as, as we move into spring, into April here, and the temperatures will hopefully start to warm up soon, it's easy to get excited about our corn and soybean planting that's just around the corner. But we can't forget about our wheat crop out in the field, and we want to make some good decisions to manage that at this critical growth stage of the wheat. So the first thing to think about is stand establishment. So as the wheat comes out of winter, what's our stand look like? Now there's a lot of concerns about wheat that laid under water for long periods of time, especially back in early March when we had a lot of rain. And so there's concern is that will that wheat that laid under water, will it survive? Is it going to make it through those tough conditions? Well, fortunately, the cool weather that we've had this year has been on our side in that respect. We can survive long periods of time in saturated soils or even under water in the cool conditions. And so the way to evaluate that is to simply um, go out and take a sample of the wheat, um, just take a shovel, dig some up, and take it into a warm place with some light, such as in your shop or in your house, and see if the wheat begins to green up and grow. If it does, then you're probably going to be in pretty good shape and you'll have a good stand of wheat. If it doesn't begin to take off and, uh, and continues to lay dormant, then it's probably not going to make it. Um, and you'll want to consider some options um, to remedy those um, stand establishment issues. Another question I've gotten this year has been related to um, the looks of the wheat. And so a lot of times um, you look at the stem of the wheat and uh, especially in some of the leaves and you'll see some of this um, brown and yellow leaves and, and uh, purpling of leaves near the tip. As you look at that, as long as it doesn't encompass the whole plant and the majority of the plant is still green, it's, it's really nothing to be concerned about. And, and um, all the wheat that I've looked at this year, um, I haven't seen any that I've been concerned about. What you're seeing there, um, some of the, uh, the browning and yellowing of the tips of the leaves is a cosmetic issue um, that, you know, as, as we were exposed to the, the very cold temperatures this winter, um, you tend to see that little bit of freeze damage. The purpling comes from um, our, our sunny days that, that might get up um, into the, a little bit warmer temperatures, you know, mid 40s into the 50s and sometimes into the 60s, but then our cold nights. And so um, just like we might see corn um, purpling in the, in the early spring in its early growth stages, as it's uh, getting established and enduring those cool night temperatures and, and sunny days, our wheat's doing the same thing. It's simply a defense mechanism against the cold and, and nothing to be concerned about. Um, at this growth stage, it doesn't tend to be um, a phosphorus deficiency as um, we typically associate purpling of leaves with. It's just a response to the cool temperatures. So. As we're looking at our stand, the next thing we want to look at is tiller counts. That's important as we make decisions in, about nitrogen. And so as you look at your wheat plant, make sure that you're, you're counting the, the tillers correctly. So this is an example of one plant that has um, five different tillers on it. So you count the number of tillers. You want to determine how many tillers you have per square feet. So you can either take a square out and uh, place it in the field and, and take a count. Or um, the method I actually prefer is to just take a tape measure and measure off the correct distance for your row spacing. So here in seven and a half inch rows, we're gonna measure off 19.2 inches and count the number of tillers we have in that distance. If you're in 10 inch rows, you would measure 14.4 inches. And if you're in 15 inch rows, you'd measure 9.6 inches. You count the number of tillers that you have. The key number you're looking for is 70. If you have more than 70 tillers, you're in pretty good shape. If you have less, then you want to look at um, increasing those tiller counts, which we'll talk about how to do in just a minute. So the next thing to think about is nitrogen. So what, what is a good nitrogen plan for wheat? Well, as far as total units of nitrogen, Bex PFR has found that right around 100 units of nitrogen is the ideal rate. And it ranges a little bit from 95 pounds to 110 pounds of N um, based on your um, cost of nitrogen. That's the right rate, but what's the right time? Well, it's actually a PFR proven practice for split applications of nitrogen. Whether you're using urea or 28% or 32% UAN, um, splitting up that application has proven to be economically beneficial um, very consistently. And so if you look at our all of our testing on average, we're seeing about a three bushel per acre gain and about a $20 per acre return on investment by making that, um, dividing that application into two trips. That $20 per acre is more than enough to pay for a second pass with the sprayer or spreader. But how do you divide that up? What rate do you put on each time? So we want that around 100 units total, but if that's where that tiller count comes into effect. So if you have about 70 tillers or less, 
um, in your field, then there's a chance that if you get the nitrogen on early enough, you could spur some more tiller growth. And so you want to apply that nitrogen at Fix 3, which is about the growth stage we're looking at right here, which is the growth stage the wheat is at as it begins to green up as it comes out of dormancy. Now, you want to put about 50% of your nitrogen on at Fix 3 and the other 50% at Fix 5, or right before jointing. Uh, jointing is that first bump that you feel in the stem about halfway up the wheat plant after the wheat begins to grow, um, grow taller. Now, if you have more than 70 tillers in the field, then you've got a really good stand and you don't want to necessarily increase the number of tillers because if we get too many tillers, um, it can actually reduce our yield potential. And so in that case, we would only put about a third of our nitrogen on um, early at the FIX 3 growth stage, just enough to get it going and get it off through that early growth stage. And then come in with the other two thirds at the FIX 5 growth stage when we're trying to get that wheat ready for its rapid growth phase and then looking forward towards grain fill. Once you've made those nitrogen applications, the other thing to think about is, is weed control. And especially if you have some early weed setting in, you may be able to um, add some weed control to your nitrogen applications. And so <clears throat> when it comes to weed control, just make note of what weeds you have. Pay attention to herbicide labels. Some good options for weed control in, in wheat is um, looking at something as simple as 2,4-D and dicamba, uh, one or the other, or a combination of the two. But with both of those chemicals, it's very important that you um, pay attention to your growth stage. Once you get the joint in the wheat at Peaks 5, um, you, it's too late to apply those because you run the risk of having some, some crop damage. Um, if you need to extend that period or if you're just looking for another option, um, herbicides such as, as Harmony or Husky are good options and those can both be applied up until flag leaf. So pay attention to the label and, and find one that fits the weeds that you are trying to control and, um, and utilize that and make sure that, that you keep the weeds under control and can uh, maximize your, the yield potential of your wheat. So with that, I hope you found this information helpful. If you have any questions, you can feel free to contact myself or your um, local Bex representative. Um, they'd be happy to help you out. Also, um, take a look at our, our wheat PFR book. Um, this is something that we publish every year. It's focused just on our practical farm research that we do um, in wheat production. And you can get this from your local Bex representative and you can also get it online at bexhybrids.com and click on PFR. So with that, thank you very much and I hope you have a, a safe spring.